This is Beacon of Hope Ministries in Clearwater, Florida, and I'm Pastor Marcia McAllister, and we are glad that you're tuning in. Whether you are live with us right now, as a lot of people are on Zoom and in the room, or if you are going to listen later, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're just glad you're with us. Um, this is a new series I'm starting today, and I'm really excited about it. The title of it is Walking in Wisdom. Uh, it just God just dropped this whole series in my heart a few weeks back. I was going to do something different that I had planned, and which I will do at some point. But God said, no, you're going to do this now. So you know what? I'm all about obeying. So we're going to obey, right? Walking in wisdom. For those of you in the room or on Zoom, if you have that red notebook that Nan has mailed to some, you may not have received it in the mail yet. Uh, that is your new book on words of wisdom. You can put a title in there, Words of Wisdom. And you're going to be putting a lot of things in that notebook in the next few weeks. And part of it is a handout I'm going to give you in a little while. Um, but a lot of things are just as you take notes on what we're talking about. All right? So uh, wisdom is important. Would you all agree yes. that we have wisdom? Yes. Uh, would you also agree a lot of people don't have it? Yes. Would you all agree? Yes. Have you all, would you all agree that there are times in your life that you felt like it was, you weren't walking in much wisdom? Because you look back on your decisions and you go, oh, why did I do that? Or why did I marry that? Or whatever the case may be. And you wonder why you made some of the decisions you made. I propose today that one of the reasons we can look back and say, why did I do that? Is because a lot of times we look back and we say, I based that on emotion, that decision. I based that on peer pressure. So if you take notes, here's some things, way that a lot, some people make their choices. Choices a lot of times are made based on peer pressure. What other people around you think you should do. How many times have you heard people say, well, I, I just called 1,500 of my closest friends. Or I put it on Facebook, uh, what should I do in this situation? Should I marry this guy or not? Or, um, you know, or you just thought, eh, hey, you know what, sounds like a good idea. Or maybe you made decisions based on your pocketbook. Uh, what was in the bank or wasn't in the bank. Or maybe you did made decisions on what you thought was best at the time and then even a few days or weeks later you look back and go, stupid decision. Can anybody relate to any of that that I just said? Okay, I don't have these written down, but I'll tell you what I just said was a lot of times we base our decisions on emotions. We base our decisions on peer pressure. We base our decisions on what is popular. We base our decisions about maybe a family member, close family member says, you should do this or you shouldn't do that. And then we just go with that. Okay, the first thing I want you to put in your notebook and your notes is Colossians 3.15 and you can look it up at some time in some translation and write it. So leave space in your notebook to write that verse out, Colossians 3.15, in the Amplified Bible and you can find that on your phone later. Because I've used this, I've quoted this verse recently and it says this, let peace be your umpire. Y'all remember that? We talked about balls and strikes a few weeks ago. Umpires decide balls and strikes, and it doesn't matter how much you rant and rave and scream into the umpire's face, you will not get a ball or strike decision changed. Baseball says umpires have the final voice on balls and strikes, okay? So listen to this in the Amplified Bible. It's memorized up here because I've used it so many times through the years. Colossians 3.15. Let peace be your umpire. Settling with all finality the decisions that confront you. Okay? That's what that verse basically says. You can write it out in your notebook, but that's what it says. Let peace be your umpire. So one of the reasons, one of the things we're going to talk about in this series is the effect of peace in our decisions. Now, a lot of times we don't know what peace feels like because we haven't lived in peace. Anybody agree with that? Yeah. A lot of times we've just lived in chaos. Peace is the opposite of chaos, right? You can write that down. And I'll tell you, a lot of times we've lived in chaos. We've grown up in chaos. We've grown up in pressure in our family unit or a marriage or whatever. And we don't even know what peace feels like, right? 
So that's one thing we're going to talk about in this series. The title of this series is Walking in Wisdom. What does that mean? When you're walking, you're going somewhere. Can everybody say amen to that? Amen. Okay, so walking means I'm here, but I'm going there. Yes. So everybody got that? Yes. If you're taking notes, write that down. I'm here, but I'm going there. So where are you going? What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see when we're going to heaven, right? Okay, that old song we sang a couple weeks ago, come and go with me to my father's house. So we want everybody we know to go with us to heaven, right? But a lot of times people will blast people with the salvation message instead of being wise in how they present it, right? Would y'all agree with me? Yes. Okay. So walking means we're going somewhere. Here's what I believe. I believe we're getting wiser and wiser. Would anybody agree with that? Amen. Walking in wisdom. You say, I don't feel like I walk in wisdom. Well, then you're pretty normal. You're a typical person, right? Who doesn't feel like you're walking in wisdom. A lot of us do not feel. We look back on our lives and we go, that was such a bad decision. Okay, what made me say that or do that? Oh, no. Why did that happen to me? Why did I take that job and nearly wreck my life, etc.? Would y'all agree? Would everybody out there on Facebook agree that we need wisdom? Would y'all agree with that? Yeah. All right, then let's look at James chapter 1. James, in the New Testament, James was the half-brother of Jesus. Okay? He was Mary's son and Joseph's son, but Jesus was Mary's son and God the Father's son, right? So they were half-siblings. Now, when Jesus walked this earth, James was not part of the disciples. James Alphaeus, James the, the other one, he was. And there was another James, the brother John. This is a different James. This is the third James. This is the half-brother of Jesus. You know when, when James, the half-brother of Jesus, came alive to the truths of God? When he saw Jesus, the resurrected Lord. All of a sudden, he became a follower. This is that James who wrote this book. This is not James, the brother of John, that wrote this. And this is not James, Alphe Alphaeus, whatever his name was. Son of Alphaeus, son of Alphaeus. Not him either. This is James, the half-brother of Jesus. Okay. And so he had a total life change when he saw the resurrected Lord. Now, guys, when you're walking in wisdom and when you understand that Jesus Christ did not just come to this earth, was a good guy, walked around and gave some nice ideas. But when you recognize that he is the resurrected Lord, just like with his brother James, it changes your life. So one of the first things you got to do is make sure you have a relationship to walk in wisdom, true godly wisdom. You not, you need to make sure you got a relationship with Jesus Christ as the resurrected Lord. That's something you might want to write down. This is something to help other people. They've got that's where true wisdom starts. Is understanding who Jesus is, who God is. Okay? So he says, James chapter one, verse one, greetings, my name is Jacob, and I'm in the Passion Translation, and the Aramaic Aramaic was translated Jacob. I am a love slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. A love slave. What's a love slave? That's somebody who's just so united to God that they're they're just a slave of what God is, you know, who he is. I'm writing to all the 12 tribes of Israel who have been sown as seeds among the nations. I'm in verse 2 of James 1, if you're just now following along. My fellow believers, when it seems as though... All right, nobody can relate to verse 2 of James 1, can we? Let me just read it in the Passion Translation. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties... Can anybody relate to that? Yeah. If you're out there in Facebook or wherever you are, if you are facing a lot of problems right now, you're that's typical for life. That's you're human, right? Okay. When you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it. How do we see it? Okay. Here's how wisdom sees it: as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. James 1, 2 says, if you got a lot of problems right now, say, thank you, Jesus, i got a lot of problems right now. I'm going to grow in joy. Now, that doesn't seem to make any sense to our average natural mind, does it? That if I have a lot of problems, I'm going to get more joy? Well, let's go on. 
For you know that when your faith is tested, what does it do? It stirs up power within you to endure all things. Here's what's good about problems. They stir up in us power to endure. Power to endure. When we have a lot of problems, if we never have any problems, we're not going to know if we can endure something or not. Would you all agree? So we, get, we need a problem. Remember Graham Cook says, you need a problem. Why do you need a problem? You can't grow in God. You can't grow in wisdom without ever having a problem. If you have gone through life and you never had a tough decision to make and ended up you making the decision it was wrong, if you never had a tough time, bad decision, would you ever want to be wise? No. You just rely on you. Hey, I, I got this. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, I, I can do this. I can do this on my own. No, no, we can't. Guess what? We need to learn to walk in wisdom. Can anybody say amen to that? And then as your endurance, this is verse 4 of James 1, as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there's nothing missing and nothing lacking. Here's what happens when we learn to walk in wisdom. We come to a point where nothing is missing and nothing is lacking because we are growing into that wisdom. Okay? We're growing into it. Okay? Verse Five of James 1. If anyone longs to be wise, is there anybody that wants to be wise? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, do you want to be wise? Is there anybody that wants to be wise? You do? You want to be wise? Why? Because it's so good when we're a little, what happens with age, is that we tend to, not everybody, but a lot of us, as we get a little older, we go, oh, I'm not making that mistake again. Uh-uh. We had somebody among us who married the same guy twice. So I think that's funny. We like to tease her about it. But she thought it was the wisest decision at the time. And then a few months into it, she goes, uh-uh, no, mm -mm, no. Okay, so I didn't mean to pick on anybody, Nan. And so anyway, <laughs> oh, oh, what? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So I, my point is this, as human beings, we are going to make decisions that are wrong. Anybody agree? Oh, yeah. Right, okay? There's a hearty amen coming from that corner over there. Right? We are going to make decisions where we go, whoa, why did that happen? Let's look at verse 5. If anyone longs to be wise, so now here's where you're going to write in your book right now, James 1, 5. If I want to be wise, I need to do something. It's point one. Here it is. James 1, 5. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. Doesn't have to be in the form of a prayer. It's just uh, when you talk to God, that's prayer. You want to be wise? Number one, ask God for wisdom. Right. Amen. So right. you ask for it. Right. It doesn't just happen, guys, just because you're born a certain place or a certain time or to a certain family or you got a certain job. No. No. You want godly wisdom? Number one, ask for it. Right? Okay. And he will give it. I love this verse. This is James 1, 5. Ask for it, and he will give it. So the second point is when you ask, guess what? He's going to give it. Make sure you have that written down. It's not a matter of asking for it, and then you wonder if anything's going to happen that's good. No. Ask for it, and he'll give it. Can anybody get that? Okay. All right. He'll give it. He won't give your lack. Of, he won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. Now, I love that verse, and that one is verse five of James one. So, he, when you ask for wisdom, God the Father is not sitting there going, "Ha ha, yeah, you need wisdom because you're messing up." So, I'm just going to scold you. I'm going to condemn you. Because you have to ask for wisdom. No, guys. It's not a matter of asking and there's a catch-22 on it. That if I ask for wisdom, then God's going to know I don't feel very wise. He already knows every single thing about you. Right. He knows what you think. He knows what happens to you in the next five minutes. He knows everything there is about you. When you ask for wisdom, it's not an invitation for God to scold you. That's what James is saying here. Everybody get this? Yeah. Okay, so write that down if you take notes. Asking for wisdom is not an invitation for God to belittle you or scold you. 
Because he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He accepts you right where you are. If you are saying right now, boy, I don't feel very wise, that's fine. You came to the right place and to the right Bible series right now. If you feel like you have looked back on your life and it's one mess after another, that's okay. God's not scolding you. Come on. I'm not. Okay? We are not to each other here in the room or on Zoom. Verse 6. Just make sure you ask how. Empowered by confident faith without doubting that you will receive. Okay, point two. Here's how you ask for wisdom. You ask it with faith believing you're going to get it. Amen. That's right. Come on. You ask it with faith believing you're going to get it. You say, oh, I don't know. My IQ is not very high. It doesn't have anything to do with your IQ, sweetheart. Nope. It has nothing to do with your education level. Right? Okay? Has no idea. And somebody may be saying, well, I didn't finish eighth grade. Okay. You can still have godly wisdom even if you don't have letters behind your name that make you more, uh, what? Educated. Yeah, educated. That's the right word. Make you more educated. Doesn't matter. Just make sure you ask empowered by confident faith without doubting that you'll receive it. I have known people that have put themselves down in everything they say all the time about themselves. You ever know anybody like that? Oh, Oh, it's just like, oh, my bad. Oh, I'm always doing stuff like that. Oh, my bad. Ever heard that? I've known a lot of people who put themselves down. And it's almost like a false humility. Because really, what the, what the, what the, what I've been experienced with some people is they want you to say, well, you're okay, you're fine. Yeah. It's almost like they need that reassurance, right? So they'll say, oh, I'm so stupid. Why did I do that again, right? Stop saying that. If you're one of these that says that about yourself, stop it. Amen. That's, right. That's what I say to my dog, Macklin, when she starts to bark. Stop it. Uh, and, and I, because, hey, if you're one that does that, yeah, you're just playing right into the devil's hands. Right. Come on. You know what the devil says to you? You're a failure. You've never amounted to a hill of beans. You're never going to make any money. You're never going to have a successful relationship. Look at you. You've been married X amount of times. Mm-hmm. Right? I know somebody who's getting ready to get married for the fifth time. And this somebody looked at me the other night, and he said, Do you condemn me for all these times I've been married? I said, it's none of my business. And I said, you know what? I've gotten to know you, and I like you a lot. So I don't care what is in your past. What I care about is what happens in your future. And to know you is to love you. So I have no right to condemn you. Wisdom does not go around. Wisdom does not do the devil's work for him. Did you get that? Uh Yeah, you may want to write that down. What's the devil do? He's constantly putting condemnation on us, right? Romans 8.1 says, There is therefore now, Romans 8.1, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Here's what God does not do. He does not beat you up. Psalm 103 verses 10 to 12 talks about how your sins are in the deepest sea, right? And God removes it as far as the east is from the west from you. When you ask for forgiveness, God does not come back and tell you, oh, I remember what you did, sweetheart. If you're getting those kinds of thoughts about your past, you are not hearing from Almighty God. Come on, don't get excited about this word. This is going to change your life right now. I'm telling you right now, this word is going to change our lives. This whole teaching on wisdom. Why? Because there's not one of us, including me, that doesn't need to be wiser. Right? With what we say, with how we think, with what we do. We need wisdom. I need it. Just make sure you ask empowered by confident faith without doubting that you'll receive. So was was that point three? If you're going to ask for it, If you're going to ask for wisdom, do not doubt that you're going to get it. That's point three. Don't doubt it, because if you doubt it, 
what's going to happen? If you sit around and go, I want to be wise, but I know I can't. Because did you see my family? They're a bunch of noise. I've heard people say things like that. Oh, well, I can't be smart because I didn't even, you know, da 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 da. Here's what number three is. If you're going to ask for wisdom, don't doubt that you get it. Okay? Y'all got that? Yeah. Because the ambivalent person, what's an ambivalent person? Somebody's double-minded? Have you ever seen those little uh, seagulls on the beach that all of a sudden they're, they're, they're walking around on one foot, one leg? You ever seen that? When I first moved to Florida 30 years ago, I thought, oh, that poor seagull. That poor seagull had his leg torn off or something. And I would watch it on the beach and I went, oh, and then one, uh, one day I was looking and I go, wait a minute, it's got two legs now. That's the same one I was just looking at. You know why? Because sometimes seagulls pick one up and they'll just trot around on one for, for whatever reason I do not know. I'll ask seagulls in heaven when we get there. Because I've asked them now, they don't have anything to say about it. <laughs> but I will tell you what it is, is it's like our minds, when we are double-minded, it's like we're trying to get somewhere on one leg. Uh, know what I'm saying? Okay? But we need the security of two to walk yeah. around. Eventually, that one seagull puts that leg down. Because they go, oh, okay, I better be able to walk around. Uh, I saved the energy. Maybe they have a bad knee, like somebody I know. Anyway, um, okay, so the third point is what? If you're going to ask, don't doubt that you're going to get it. Okay? Third thing, fourth thing. For the person, the ambivalent person, believes one minute and doubts the next. Let's see what's wrong with that. Being undecided makes you become like the rough seas driven and tossed by the wind. Whoa. You're up one minute, tossed down the next. You ever known somebody like that? One minute they're as high as kite, next minute they're in the pit of yeah. depression. Right? Verse 7 of James 1. When you are half-hearted and wavering, it leaves you unstable. All right, so point four is this. Make sure you are not wavering, that you are saying consistently, I want to be wiser. You say, well, what happens if I, I start this series with you on wisdom and then I'm so messed up in this week, I have a terrible week and this happens and I make a terrible decision. Well, get up, sweetheart, and go again. Right? right. When a baby learns to walk, what do they do? Right? <laughs> Eight of my grandkids are under the age of nine. Right? And so I've seen a lot of babies in the last few years, and I've seen them as they're just starting to walk, whether it's on video or in person, me with them. And when they're just starting to walk, they fall down all the time. Babies fall down. Okay? Yeah? Remember the weeble wobbles, weeble, they weeble wobble, they don't fall down, babies yes. fall down. Okay? They do. And then they'll stand up and they'll grab a hold of the sofa or they'll grab a hold of something and they'll, they'll take a step and then they'll fall down again. Guys? If make this the whatever point four is five, okay. Don't condemn yourself for falling into unwise traps. Right. Amen. Come on. If you're gonna walk in wisdom, you gotta learn to stay the course for wisdom. You've asked for wisdom. Don't be double minded and say, you know what, after all I don't want wisdom. No. Don't fall into those traps. If a baby fell once and sat down and just thought, well, that was too hard. I'm just going to be a baby sitting on the floor in my diaper forever. No, we never grow up. Guys, you are going to make mistakes. In your new walk in, in, in uh, the, the wisdom, uh, thank you, Mr. In your new walk in wisdom, you're going to fall down. You're going to weeble wobble and fall down. But you know what? God's going to help you pick you right back up. Okay? So when you are half-hearted and wavering, it leaves you unstable. Can you really expect to receive anything from the Lord when you're in that condition? No. Okay, guys, as soon as you find yourself in that unstable situation and you ask for wisdom but you've just made a really bad decision, then what you do is 1 John 1, 9. Put that in your book. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what happens when we fall, when we get into some decisions that are not wise? Lord, forgive me. Come on. 
Down to verse 12 of James 1. If your faith remains strong, even when you are surrounded by life's difficulties, you will continue to experience the untold blessings of God. What number are we on, Nan? Six? Six. Okay. As you begin to walk in wisdom, you will, con you will begin to experience the untold blessings of God. You're going to have blessings hit you like you never expected. This is number six. When you are, no matter what you're going through, but you stay the course, <coughs> the blessings are going to start coming. Everybody follow that? Number six. True happiness comes as you pass the test with faith and receive the victorious crown of life promised every lover of God. This is the lover's crown, which I have taught on before. We won't talk about that right now. But basically what this, number seven, is, is stay the course. Six. Stay the course. Six. Stay the course. Stay the course. Okay? That's number six. We're going to get to number seven, and then we're going to Proverbs. Number seven is found in verse 17. Verse 17 of James chapter 1 will change your life. I, I put, and there's going to be times I'm going to give you suggestions in your notebook. These are verses that you need to, to write out in your notebook in different translations until something hits you. I'm teaching out a passion translation right now. But I will tell you, this is a verse I memorized when I was probably eight or nine. James 1, 17. And I'm going to quote it to you in the King James because I've never memorized it in anything other than the King James as a kid. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no, sh no shadow, no shifting shadow. Okay, so what that means is this. Now let's read it in the Passion. Every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect, streaming down from the Father of lights who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness and is never subject to change. So number seven, and then we'll go into something different, is this. When you begin to walk in wisdom, here's what you're going to experience. Every gift of God is good. If you are asking God for an answer to something or someone in your life or a situation or a job, if when you say, Lord, I'm going to depend on you for the wisdom to get this job, to do this, whatever. Every gift God freely gives you is good and perfect. Streaming down from the Father of lights. In other words, you don't have to be so concerned about making wrong decisions when you are trusting God. Does everybody follow all that? Let's talk about Solomon, and then let's go to the book of Proverbs. Let me tell you about Solomon real quick. On the radio today at 3 o'clock, Betty and Madeline and I are going to talk more about Solomon. This, this, you can make a note of where it is, and you can read this in your, on your own. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 to 14. 1 Kings 3, 5 to 14. We have the story of Solomon taking over the throne of Israel from his father David. And Solomon uh, had a dream. And in this dream, it's, it's depicted here in 1 Kings 3, 5 to 14. God says, what do you want? Solomon, you're starting this reign. You know you're going to be the third king of Israel. Okay? What is it you want? Solomon did not ask for power, riches, or wisdom. Now, we say Solomon's the wisest man, right? Yeah. But here's what he asked for. If you write down, you write this. Solomon asked for a discerning heart. A discerning heart is a heart that sees the difference between good and evil. A heart that sees the difference between a bad decision and a good decision. We call that wisdom. But he asked specifically for a discerning heart. And God said, because you've asked for that, here's what I'm going to give you. Riches, power, and wisdom. Whoa. Why? Because Solomon was wise enough to ask that God would show him what is a good decision, what's a bad decision. A discerning heart. Have you ever gotten scammed by a person? Yep, yep. We've had a couple people in our congregation over the years who have gotten scammed by one of those things where, here, I'm going to put this money in your bank account, and, uh, you know, then when I get back to the States, you can give it back to me, and, uh-huh. 
Uh, I won't go into the details because these two people might be listening. So I don't want to point out, but I'll tell you what, guys, those kind of scams are still very prevalent, right? Right? Be careful. Don't ever. Have you seen the commercial now where little kids playing with a teddy bear and the teddy bear is talking and the mother's in the other room and the, the, the little bear says, what's your social security number? And mom, what's my social security number? Well, it's three. Uh, oh, whoa, why? whoa. Who's asking what? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That commercial is really good. Yeah. Or mom, what's your maiden name? Right. Okay. Yeah. So, and and the little and so it's like it's an alert. Yes. Be careful yeah. who you give information to. In this study of wisdom, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little mouth, what you say. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Yes. Wisdom. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Sunday school song. For the Father up above is looking down in love, in love. So be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little feet, where you go. Yeah. If you don't remember anything else about this sermon today, remember that. Careful little feet where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful little feet where you go. Be careful little person who you hang out with. Yep, that's right. That's my version. Be careful little person who you hang out with. For the Father up above is looking down in love and is worried about you. <laughs> no, he doesn't worry. So be careful little person who you hang out with. Proverbs chapter 1. Okay, man, give those to the people in the room, and we'll make sure the people on Zoom get them. It's a little handout I did yesterday. It's just one page, okay? But it's easier for you that are taking notes in notebooks to get this information and put it in your notebook later, okay? Here's the definition of wisdom. You ready? Yes. The art of successful living. You like that? Wisdom is the art of successful living. Okay? Now, Siri says, ready for Siri? Yeah. Siri says wisdom is inseparable from knowledge and understanding. I like that. Wisdom equals knowledge and understanding. Yes. you got to have both. That's part of wisdom. Okay? Everybody got all that? Yeah. Now, the third thing that's on this handout, for those of you who are on Facebook, wisdom comes from God's revelation. God revealing truths to you, how to behave. I'm going to go those three real quick because somebody may want to write down. Wisdom is the art of successful living. Wisdom is inseparable from knowledge and understanding. Do you need understanding? You need knowledge. Wisdom comes from God's revelation. The Hebrew word for proverb. We're going to the book of Proverbs chapter 1. We're only going to hit a couple verses because we don't have time. We'll go on next week. The Hebrew word for proverb is the word M-A-S-H-A-L. Mashal. Mashal means, it has two meanings. I love these meanings. Okay? The first means a parable. What did Jesus teach in? Parables. Parables. The word proverbs means parable. In other words, wise sayings. We just got done with the Jesus Messiah series. It went 16 weeks here. It's on our YouTube channel. Go there and listen if you missed any of them. And it was all about the book of Luke and all of the wise parables that Jesus told people, right? Yes. Now, Proverbs means parable. parable. It also means a byword, a metaphor. You know what a metaphor is, right? It's an example of something. A pithy saying. I like this definition, a pithy saying. What's a, a pithy saying? A pithy saying is something that just grabs you, right? And you go, whoa, I can remember that because of that, right? It's a pithy saying that expresses wisdom. What does a proverb do? It expresses wisdom. Yeah. In a nutshell, proverbs express wisdom, okay? Years ago when I had my Christian bookstore in Indiana, uh, I had volunteers who worked for me because it was not a money-making proposition. It was a uh, ministry. And from that grew our uh, counseling ministry where we had six full-time counselors. And from that grew the church that I pastored. So the bookstore was just kind of the door to get people in the door. 
Well, one of my volunteers was probably about 40 years older than me at the time, okay? And a wise lady. So one day I said to her, her name was Nancy, she's in heaven now. I said, Nancy, why are you so wise? She goes, I'm glad you asked. I said, she goes, I've been wanting to tell you this. I said, okay, good, I'm glad I asked. She goes, I read a chapter in the book of Proverbs every day of my life. She said, did you notice there's 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs? I said, yeah. She goes, for each day of the month, I sit down and usually the Amplified was her, was her version of choice. And I sit down and I read that chapter and I write things and I write in my journal, in my little notebook, and I write things as God speaks to me. What is one of the definitions of wisdom? Something that God speaks to your heart reveals a truth to you. Okay, did everybody catch that? Yes. Nancy's in heaven, but I want to talk to her someday about this teaching I'm doing right now on Proverbs. The second meaning of proverb is to rule, to take dominion, or reign with power. Yes. Okay? And I wrote it out, even though I spelled passion wrong on this handout. Um, within this, listen to this, divinely anointed compilation of proverbs, there is a deep well of wisdom in Proverbs, to reign in life and to succeed in our destiny. Right. The wisdom that God has designed for us to receive will cause us to excel, to rise up as rulers to be on earth, his glory. The kingdom of God is brought into earth as we implement the godly wisdom of Proverbs. So as we begin to put this series, what we're going to learn, into our lives, What's going to happen? The kingdom of God is going to get stronger in you. And the kingdom of God that radiates from you to others is going to bless many, many people. Right. Proverbs 1-7 in the, in the Passion Translation is on this handout. How then does a man gain the essence of wisdom? Okay? How do we do that? We cross the threshold of true knowledge when, okay, so now I'm, let's, I'm in the Passion Translation, and for the people that have the handout, they have it right there, what I'm about to say. <clears throat> We're going to look at verse 7 in the Passion Translation. How then does a man gain the essence of wisdom? We cross the threshold of true knowledge when we live in, everybody see this? Yeah. If you mark up your paper, whatever, we live in obedient devotion to God. Obedient devotion. Stubborn know-it-alls will never stop to do this. Have you ever known a stubborn know-it-all? Oh, yeah. uh, a person who knows it all and tells you they do? Or a person who's a know-it-all but they don't tell you they, that they are, but you can tell by their attitude they think they are. Stubborn know-it-alls will never stop to do this, for they scorn true wisdom and knowledge. Go back with me to verse 1 of Proverbs 1. Here are kingdom revelation words to live by. These are words to live by, guys. <clears throat> and words of wisdom given to empower you to reign in life. Written as Proverbs by Israel's King Solomon, David's son. <clears throat> Let's go down to verse, uh, what is it, two? two? About halfway down verse two. Use them as keys. Okay, what are the Proverbs? They are keys to unlock the treasures of true knowledge. If you write something down, write that down. That's Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2 in the Passion Translation. Use them as keys to unlock the treasures of true knowledge. Those who cling to these words will receive discipline to demonstrate wisdom in every relationship and to choose what is right and just and fair. Boy, that is a real take-it-to-the-bank thing. You ever bought something online and the little description says, well, if you buy this, here's what, this is going to cause your cooking time on this to, to decrease dra drastically and blah, 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 or whatever it is you bought, right? Okay, it's going to do this for you. This is what Proverbs 1 verse 2 is saying. Use these things as keys to unlock the treasures of true knowledge. Those who cling to these words will get better in your relationships. Yeah. Hey, that's a win-win, isn't it? Getting these words in the book of Proverbs down. Remember, we just learned in James, you can ask for wisdom and you'll get it. Now, what do you do? You have to apply it to your life, guys. Here's where the rubber meets the road for a lot of people. They'll, they'll read a verse and they go, oh, yeah, that's a nice verse. 
And they don't stop and say, Holy Spirit, how am I supposed to apply this to my life right now? Look at verse 4, Proverbs 1. These Proverbs will give you great skill. To do what? To teach the immature and make them wise. To give youth the understanding. Hmm. So important. I want to finish this up somehow. To verse 33, Proverbs chapter 1. And then we'll wrap it up. And we'll go on next week. That's just an intro anyway. we got a lot to talk about. But the one who always listens to me, this is God talking, what's going to happen? So if you decide, if you decide after today's teaching that you're going to ask God for wisdom, then expect that you're going to get it. All right? Everybody got that, right? Don't be double-minded. Remember that in James 1. Don't say, yeah, I want wisdom, and then tomorrow go, you know what, forget that prayer I prayed yesterday. I don't want that after all. Okay? Why? Because with wisdom, as you're learning wisdom, a lot of times the Holy Spirit's going to correct you. The Holy Spirit will go, you shouldn't have said that. You say, wait a minute, he can talk like that? Oh, yeah. When you're asking for wisdom, all of a sudden your mouth sometimes just shuts. And the Holy Spirit says, shut up. Does the Holy Spirit say shut up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quiet. All quiet on the set. Silly thing. Shut up and listen. Does the Holy Spirit do that? Yes. In this series, we are going to talk about how the Holy Spirit interacts with us. Advising us. Teaching us. Verse 33 of Proverbs 1. But the one who always listens to me. This is wisdom. Wisdom is talking here. Okay? The one who listens to wisdom will live undisturbed in a heavenly peace. <coughs> That's coming to heaven. Heaven's coming. Oh, look at the rest of this verse. Boy, this is great news. The one who always listens to wisdom will be free from fear. Did you hear that? Now take a drink of water. The one who listens to wisdom will be free from fear, confident, and courageous. Do you need some courage? Yeah. You need some confidence? You will rest unafraid and sheltered from the storms of life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I couldn't have ended this sermon any better than that verse. Passion Translation, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33, says this. The one who always listens to me, the me is wisdom, right. so I'm going to put that word in there. Yeah. Wisdom's talking here, okay? The one who always listens to wisdom will live undisturbed in a heavenly peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love. I don't know about you, but I like to live in peace versus chaos. Yes. I, I choose peace. I choose peace. Free from fear? Oh, yeah. yeah. Confident and courageous? Yeah. yeah. You will rest unafraid. Put your head on your pillow and you're not stewing and stewing and stewing and worrying all night long. You get more wisdom, you're going to sleep better. Come on, you take that to bank. It says right here in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33. You're going to rest better. Your mind's going to shut off quicker. You just be resting in Jesus. You will rest unafraid and sheltered from the storms of life. And that, folks, is an introduction to walking in wisdom. Is this something you want? Come on, is this something you want? Yeah. More wisdom? Yes. Yes. You should. If you don't, I'll pray for you that you want it. Because we should want it. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So Solomon asked God for a discerning heart. Would you like to know more about uh, people? Have you ever had somebody come up to you and you just feel bad vibes? Something's not quite right there. 
Guys, the more wisdom you walk in, the more you're going to be able to distinguish between yeah. evil yeah. and good. You might say amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes people are across our paths and they have not a good intention. That's true. They have other ideas that aren't going to be good for you. You're going to learn to really walk in that wisdom. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about this. I want to get wiser. And if it has to do with gray hair, I don't have a lot yet, but I, you know, I'll take, if, if, if it means I gotta get some gray hair to get wiser, that's what people say, if you get gray hair, you get wiser. I don't really think that's true. No, it's biblical. It has nothing to do with gray hair. Your Facebook audience, there might be some of you out there today who are going, you mean really we can be that aware of whether or not we are acting in wisdom in our lives, the answer to that is, oh, yes, you can. Okay? Today we're just going to do something a little different because we only have one mic. We've, got, we've had mic trouble the last couple weeks. So instead of doing, repeating the sinner's prayer, I'm just going to ask those in the room and on Zoom, and we'll get another mic by next week. But I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and talk to God for just a moment. And if it is your sincere desire to walk hand in hand with Almighty God, tell him that. If you're not sure of your salvation, say, Lord, come into my heart right now. Come into my heart and live in me. Forgive me for anything I've ever said or done that was not pleasing to you. I want you to fill me with your presence and your wisdom. And you just say that. You can say it in your head. You don't even have to say it out loud, but I really encourage you to say it out loud. Because we always want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus. So just do that. If you need to do that, do it today. Step two of this prayer. If you can look at your life and look back and say, I have made some really bad decisions. I have really messed up in some areas of my life. I know I can look back and say that. <laughs> if we're all honest, I think we all can do that. But I put a stake in the ground, and I'll be the first to do it right now. I'll be the first today to put a stake in the ground and say, Lord, I want to learn what you want to teach me on wisdom. I want to be full of your wisdom. I want a discerning heart like Solomon asked for. Lord, that's what I want. That's the attitude of my heart today. I want to learn what you want to teach me. Lord, I don't want to look back on this season in my life where I had an opportunity to get wiser and I snubbed my nose at it. Don't want to do that. If that's your decision, put a stake in the ground right now and say, God, I'm asking you to come alive in me with wisdom that is beyond what I've had before this moment. And if that is your prayer, ask him. Don't doubt. Ask him believing that he'll give it to you. And he will. This I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Facebook audience, always glad to have you with us. Our Sunday afternoon show is now in its 16th year. Every Sunday on TantalkNetwork.com in Clearwater, it's a radio station here. It's on five stations every Sunday. But the easiest way to reach us or to watch the show or to hear the show, uh, because sometimes our radio team members are calling in, like today, Betty and Madeline will be calling in. And you can't see me in the control room, but you could see them if they were in the studio. But you can hear us. Just open up YouTube. Go to Tan Talk Radio slash live and you'll be able to hear the show. Tan Talk Radio slash, yeah, slash live. And if you want to hear a lot of our sermons, our teachings from the last two years, we've been doing this for two years, more, two and a half, go to our YouTube channel now, which is capital letters, B-O-H-M, space, global, and subscribe and become a partner with us. No, there's no financial obligation, nothing like that. We just want you to get the Word of God in you. And uh, please do that. Go to our YouTube channel, BOHM, capital letters, space, global, little letters, and uh, start watching the teachings and things maybe you missed. Our Heaven series last year was 
45 weeks long. <laughs> I don't think the Wisdom series is going to be that long. But, but we do have some good stuff on our YouTube channel. This has been Pastor Marsha and the Beaconites bringing you God's word today from Beacon of Hope Ministries in Clearwater, Florida. God bless you. See you next week. Okay, I want to talk to the roomies and the zoomies in a minute. Okay, I'll make